Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, I just have reminder announcements today. Uh, for those of you that might have attended last Sunday, uh, this will be a little bit of a review for you, but uh, just wanted to let you know that um, next Sunday we are having a community worship service here at church at 9.30, and you're invited to gather your friends and your neighbors to join us. We're going to have worship and then a potluck brunch, so kind of more breakfasty type foods, but um, we'll take anything. So if you um, would put that in your in your memory and uh, plan to attend our potluck and community worship next Sunday. Then a reminder about Karsten's Farm Worship. That will be Sunday, September 11th at 9 a.m. in front of the farmhouse, and we will not be having services here. So. Everybody is encouraged to go out to the Carson's Farm for the worship there, and the Methodist Church will be in charge of the service. Then, a reminder about our Sunday School Rally Day that's starting September 18th. Our Sunday School classes will begin um, with actually some games and some fun, and uh, I'm planning to try and do a treasure hunt as well. So. Uh, if you want to share this information with those that you know that have um, young young kids, we're uh, open to preschool through sixth grade for our Sunday school, and so please share that information as well. And then I also told people that we are looking for some Sunday school teachers to do like team teaching for a month at a time, and so if you or anybody you know uh, would like to um, share a month with our Sunday school kids, we would love to be able to have teams of two rotate um, throughout the year so that nobody is um, doing Sunday school themselves the entire year. So this is a, a way to kind of spread the, spread the joy and spread the workload out um, so, that, so that we can accommodate all people. And then I have a new announcement. Um, there's an upcom upcoming free concert and that is happening in Neola during Hebrew days. Um, it is a concert by Kevin McClure and his band, and they are performing on September 3rd, that's a Saturday, from 6 to 8 p.m., and it's a block party on 4th and Front Street in Neola. And so you are invited to attend the free concert. I believe it is a Christian concert, and so um, that should be a fun time as well. Are there any other announcements you want to share this morning? Or prayer concerns that we need to lift up? No? Okay. Well then, um, I have a little welcome video I'd like to show for you, and then we'll get started with our first song of the day. So... <coughs>
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Thought, word, and deed, by what we 
have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. By the authority of Christ and by his command, I declare to, the, to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together our opening prayer. Almighty and sovereign God, through the, the gracious gift of baptism, you forgive our sins, give us life in Christ, and grant us a place at your heavenly banquet. By the power of your Holy Spirit, create in us humble hearts and an attitude of mutual love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we'll have our readings for you. reading for this morning is from Proverbs chapter 25 verses 2 through 10. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search them out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue, argue your case with your neighbor himself and do not reveal another secret, lest he who, bring, who hears you bring shame upon you and your ill repute have no end. Please read responsibly Psalm 131. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I by myself with great manners, or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet, like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, Wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral, immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can a man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go up to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, 
but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Sorry. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Here ends the reading for today.
Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited, when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And he also said to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be unto Christ. The reformer Martin Luther once said, true humility does not know that it is humble. If it did, it would be proud from the con the contemplation of so fine a virtue. In other words, the more humble we try to be, the greater the risk of becoming proud of it, which is false humility. Have you yourself ever gone over to someone's home for supper and wondered where to sit? Most of the time, we don't want to sit at the head table or at the head um, of the table, but we also probably don't want to sit at the kids' table if there happens to be one. Unless, perhaps, you prefer to be a kid yourself and enjoy watching little kids uh, chew with their mouth open as they try to talk, or you like to dribble food all over the table. As a pastor, I get the privilege of attending a lot of wedding suppers and funeral lunches. And there are always people that want to be first in line or right next to the head table. And there are also others that always hang out at the back, waiting to be invited to find a chair or to get in line. Most people seem to discreetly work their way somewhere into the middle. Which one are you? Have you ever asked yourself why you do what you do when it comes to sitting at a dinner? I wonder if perhaps there was a lesson you might have learned somewhere in your life. Or was it just a preference? I always find it interesting to watch how people organize themselves. Jesus was doing a similar thing when he went to the dinner of the Pharisees' invitation. They meant to watch him because they were trying to trap him. The Pharisees, as you might know, were those who were experts in the law. And they wished that everyone would follow the letter of the law 
perfectly, thinking that if everyone would just follow the law as perfectly as possible, then their society would be all the better. But the reason why they invited Jesus to this meal was not for fellowship or comfort or a celebration, like you might at a wedding or perhaps a funeral. They weren't there to even learn from one another. The Pharisees had an ulterior motive, and that was to trap Jesus in uh, perhaps a lie, or to trap him by the rules of the law. But, as is often the case, that didn't work. Jesus, in effect, ended up trapping them in their own um, self-righteousness. <clears throat> and so, when we listen to these uh, verses from Jesus, he asked them a question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Well, they didn't know what to say, and so they remained silent. So Jesus decided he would do what uh, would be natural for the Son of God to do, and that would be to show mercy and kindness and so he healed the man of his dropsy, which, if you don't know what dropsy is, it's kind of like an edema. It was, he was swoll swollen and um, probably very uncomfortable. And this man who needed healing was also most likely um, sort of planted there in the dinner so that they could do this trapping of Jesus. Jesus is smarter than the average guy, and so he probably knew that this man was a plant, but decided anyway, I'm going to heal him because he's obviously in need. Jesus uses this as a way to show them the error of their thinking, that of course we must bring comfort and peace to those who need it and to those who are on the margins, because if, if you know anything about uh, purity laws and all the different ways that people had to kind of separate themselves from anyone that wasn't uh, visually perfect with their skin and their, their, their body, uh, they would be cast off to the outer edges of society. And so when Jesus heals this man of his dropsy or his edema, he, in effect, restores him to, to his family and to relationship with others. And then Jesus asks the question about where should people sit? And he says that we ought to give um, our place, we should sit in the place of the lowest person there. Because he's at this feast and he's seen uh, all the different Pharisees clamoring over each other and trying to find the, the, the best place to sit or, or um, kind of find the right pecking order for who should sit where according to uh, society's ranking system. You know how that works. You know, when you go to a dinner, you would never go um, to a wedding, most likely, and sit yourself down at the head table with the bridal party because that would just be ridiculous, right? Well, it's kind of a similar situation. These people were just trying to find the best, trying to find the best place. But Jesus says, no, in, in reality, you should go to the lowest place. But if we try to go to the lowest place, thinking that we're not worthy of being at a, a higher place, then it's kind of like we're doing the same thing with um, having a false humility. God doesn't want us to think that we're the lowest con scum of the earth, nor does he want us to think that we're the ultra-religious Pharisee. He wants us to think of ourselves as Christ's sons and daughters, where 
Everyone is equal at the foot of the cross. And while we're doing that, we're also to consider the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and to invite those folks to the table as well, to invite those folks to the feast. And I just wonder, as a congregation, as a, as a church, as uh, followers of Christ, how we are doing at inviting those folks to join us at our table, at our communion table, at our fellowship table, and um, at, at the table of just our community and our actions and our activities and, and different events. Where do you put yourself at a banquet and why? I always try in my mind to think I'm a servant of Christ and therefore if I'm a servant of Christ I have to try to do what Christ would have me do and what he has done and that would be to serve and to hang out at the back, right? But how many times I've been to a funeral lunch or any kind of thing and they'll tell me, no, 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 you should be first, you should be first. <laughs> I feel so uncomfortable doing that because of scriptures like this, which tell us, you know, to be humble and to um, consider ourselves uh, not the least, but not the best. And so it's kind of confusing on how to listen and to um, interpret these things and then to know where should we put ourselves well i think the best advice then is to consider ourselves as christ considers ourselves and that is beloved and baptized in his name forgiven loved saved not better than somebody else, but no worse. And to just accept the gift and the blessing of being one of Christ's own, being um, a follower of him and learning from him and trusting in him, and also recognizing that Christ himself humbled himself and gave his life on a cross. He was willing to go to the outer edges of, of society. He, he went out the doors of and the gates of Jerusalem, and he was crucified on a cross in Calvary, which when, when they made sacrifices uh, in Jesus' day, they, they threw the animals out on the rubbish heap. It's kind of a similar thing. Jesus went outside the city and was kind of part of a, a, a sacrifice for us like those that gave them their bodies for the sacrifices of the Jews that um, were trying to find forgiveness and whatnot through all these different means. But we are to remember what Christ did for us and to trust that we belong at his table. And there is no one greater place except for the place for Christ himself, seated at the right hand of God. All the rest are equal places for his beloved, for you. Christ is for you. Amen. Our song is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's now turn to God in prayer. O Lord, mercifully continue to purify and defend your church. Since she cannot stand firmly without your power, govern her always by your grace, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, give speech and wisdom to those whom you have called to teach your sacred word. Fill them with your spirit and inspire them with your power, that they may speak for you. Open the ears and hearts of all who hear the message of your servants, that your promise would engender faith within. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord God, bless and protect all school children, teachers, staff, and administrators around the country as they begin the adventure of a new school year. Help children to be respectful of one another and all those in authority. Give the teachers patience and joy in the work in which they're called to do. May, be, may this year be one without violence, so that schools are a safe place for all. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God and ruler of nations, you have blessed your land and country and given us more than we could ever deserve. Therefore, we pray that you would help us as your people to be a light to the nations. Raise up among us those whose lives are faithful and true, that by their example we may serve as citizens with justice and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have created us in your own image as beings intended for and capable of loving relationships. You have placed us in homes and families and have provided neighbors and friends. Thank you for the gift of love. Help each of us to look to the needs of one another as those who have been knit together by your gracious care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed God, we pray for those among us and those around us in our neighborhoods and in our families and around us. For those who are struggling with illness or healing from um, injury or dealing with grief. We remember Lois Albers, Joni Eggers, Marion Eggman, Brian Castor, Sharon Warden, Larry and Lucy Schlenzig, Donna Day, Michelle Jacobson, Kathleen Petit, Maxine Sick, Mama Jewel, Bob Toms, Catherine Toms, Karan, Holly, and the family of Lois Zacharias. Be with all these dear ones, Lord, and bring healing and hope and restoration. For all these, Lord, we pray, trusting in your mercy and grace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now just a word of thanksgiving for offerings received today. Our offering plates are there at the entrance of our sanctuary, our worship space. And uh, we appreciate those gifts, and we pray that God will advise us and help us to use them according to his will and for the ministry of his church. And also we want to thank those who um, give online uh, through our website at unitedlutheranshelby.org. 
You can find a giving tab there at the top of the page and just click the links and you can find your way. Let's pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll sing our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.